For our FinTech Spotlight segment this month, we are featuring Grove, a company that is focused on providing certified financial planning for the rest of us. Not just the millionaires and the bagajillionaires, but for everyone. I've invited the founder of Grove, Chris Hutchins, to tell us more about Grove and how it can help us receive affordable and accessible financial advice. With Fortune, Business Insider, and Wall Street Journal all featuring Grove lately, I just had to learn more about this company that's making waves in the financial services industry. Welcome to the show, Chris. Yeah, thanks for having me. So Chris, there is a lot of distrust in the financial advising world. And I'll be honest with you, I've had some bad experiences myself. Why do you think there's so much distrust going on in the financial advising world right now? Yeah, I think a few things. So one uh, fun stat, nine out of 10 financial advisors are brokers and brokers have no legal obligation to act in your best interest. Uh, so that's a bit frightening when you think about, uh, you know, that being 90% of financial advisors. Throw on top of that, you know, everything that's happened with Equifax, with Wells Fargo, and like, it's, you know, it's uh, no surprise that people are not trusting financial institutions. Uh, it's just, yeah. it's, it's a nine out of 10. That is just, mm. that, that blows my mind. So you, you use the word fiduciary a lot on your, on your site, and uh, yes. we've talked about that on the show, but... Let's remind people what that is and why it's an important word to know. Yeah, so when we take on a fiduciary obligation, we take on a legal responsibility to put our client's interest ahead of our own. Uh, so we're we're operating in that capacity in in exclusivity. We're not we don't have a dual registration where we can switch capacities. That's that's where we're at all the time. Yeah. Okay. So. So, okay, outside of, let's, let's say we find somebody that, that we like, uh, that we understand, that, that understands that, that maybe has our, our best interest in mind. Uh, even knowing that those folks are out there, why, why is the adoption level so low for getting personal finance advice or, or professional financial advice? Yeah, I mean, the entire industry has been built, as you said in the intro, for people with lots of money. Uh, most financial advisors have a minimum to work with them. That minimum can be as low as half a million, as high as $10 million. And so it turns out most people don't have half a million dollars. So uh, if most financial advisors are working with millionaires and most people aren't millionaires, there's a disconnect. Uh, if you don't trust a lot of financial institutions and financial advisors, there's a reason not to work with them. Um, and if you're in your 20s, 30s, 40s right now, and you look at a financial institution that's you know down the street, a Raymond James or something like that, you walk in, it's probably gonna feel like an experience that's different from the experience you know, you're used to having uh, with a lot of other products and services you use. Um, you know, they're on your phone, they you know, exist in a more casual environment and you know, aren't often a, you know, an older person in a suit who kind of feels more like you know, a generation one or two above you than, than someone that might understand your particular needs and goals and family. Got it. So h how big is this market that's looking for this help that is not in this millionaire and you know, millionaire style? Like, what, what, what kind of market are we looking at? And I know that's where you guys are focusing. So how big is this market? Yeah, I mean, if you just look at, I mean, the market right now just of people getting financial advice is in the, you know, 50 plus billion dollar range. Uh, if you're looking at who's not getting advice, I'd say it's, it's not as, it, it's greater in people. It might not be greater in dollars of wealth. Mm -hmm. um, but we look at, uh, you know, the 20s, 30s, 40s generation, which is our target target demographic, and that's in the 20 million range of people or households. So there's millions of households out there who are in the kind of part of their lives where they're starting to think about getting married, buying a home, you know, changing jobs, having kids, the kind of things that really make life get complicated. And uh, that generation is kind of missing a solution. And, and that's what we're trying to build. Yeah. And that, that 20 million people you're talking about, <laughs> they're, they're, they're looking for help. They're, they're, they're listening to podcasts. They're reading blogs. They're like, somebody help me figure this out because I can't afford five thousand dollars a year for somebody to help me figure this out, right? Yeah, exactly. You know, the average cost of working with a financial planner is over twenty five hundred dollars right now, and that's out of the range of kind of possibility for a lot of people. And you know, I, th I think it's hard to come across financial advice that you can trust that's free. And so, you know, I don't think it's reasonable to expect that the fi best financial advice will be free, but at the same time, thousands of dollars is a really big expense for a lot of people. 
Yeah. So we're, we're talking a lot about the problem right now, obviously. And then today we want to talk about uh, what you have to offer as a solution. So let's talk about the genesis of Grove. Where did this all come from? How did you decide that this was something that was important that you wanted to lead? Yeah. So, you know, I'm just like personally crazy about finance. So if you go back and find anyone that's had a dinner with me for basically the last 20 years, it's uh, devolved into some conversation about retirement savings or budgeting or credit cards or points or miles. And I kind of go deep there. And as I kind of entered that, you know, late 20s, early 30s stage of life, I had a lot of friends that were all in that kind of transition point where you go from, you know, not really having any responsibility other than yourself to having other things you're responsible for. Maybe it's your parents, your spouse, your kids, and your mortgage. And when that happens, the overwhelming fear or uncertainty of whether you're doing it right really creeps up. And as I was, you know, talking to lots of people, naturally talking about money, because that happens when you're around me, uh, it just kept coming up over and over again. I don't know if I'm doing it right. I don't know if I'm tr on track. I feel like I'm not saving enough or I don't know what whether my goals are, you know, able to be, you know, something I could achieve. And that just kept happening. And I had spent the last three years before Grove working as a venture capitalist at Google after selling my last company to Google and, you know, had been watching and investing in lots and lots of startups. And the more I heard about people needing something, the more I looked in the industry and the market, the more I realized there was there had to be a product like this. And it, it kind of felt like my calling to to leave Google and, and go start a company. That's cool. So you you didn't personally probably work with a financial advisor during this time frame in your life because you were so in <sighs> into this stuff. Is that right? Yeah, I remember a few moments where I would talk to friends of mine and say, well, you know, have you not built a future cash flow model for your life? Like, <laughs> is that why you're stressed out? And I got a couple stares that were like, yeah, no, I definitely haven't built a future cash flow model for my life. Uh, and so as I started realizing that maybe I was, you know, more the exception than the norm, uh, it became clear that someone needed to build something so that this this whole industry could make more sense to people. Yeah, yeah, it's funny. I have I have a lot of a lot of friends that'll come up to me and they'll you know, they'll they'll ask me questions or they'll talk to me about certain subjects and like you said in your brain it's like, "Oh, well, you you don't you don't automatically just do that." And I have to remind myself that a lot of people out there just don't care about this stuff as much as you and I do, Chris. And they, yeah. don't, they don't nerd out on, a, on, a, on as much. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. They are specialized in other areas of their lives that make them great. So they need this this type of help. So uh, you know, there's there's lots of other companies out there that are that are um, you know providing services like this. What makes you guys a little bit different? Tell us a little bit about how it works. Yeah, so the way the process works today is, and, and the way we were able to start the company and why we were able to offer it a lower price is we build software. And we build that software to make the experience better for the client and better for the financial planner. Um, so we have a team of certified financial planners on staff. We build software that makes their jobs easier. We build software that makes the consumer experience better, which makes the, the overall process more efficient and, and us able to offer it more affordably. Um, how it would work was you sign up, you fill out your profile online. The entire experience is virtual. Uh, you'd sync your accounts so you don't have to go collect all of your old bank statements. And that, that gets shared with a financial planner who you schedule a kind of review call with. Uh, you and your planner and your spouse, if you have one, uh, will talk about your goals, where your situation is today, kind of how you think about money, how you think about risk, what you really care about. And that financial planner will go and take all that information and build out a personalized plan for you. And that plan will not just take a look at you know, your investments, it also takes a look at where's your cash? What should you do with your debt? Are you optimizing you know, where you keep your cash? What ways could you save more efficiently? Whether that's things the government might offer like an IRA or a 529, things your employer might offer like a 401k or an FSA or an HSA, or maybe a stock purchase program. Uh, how to think about all of those elements of ways you could save better, ways you could optimize your finances, and also ways that you could save for the future. So whether that's a long-term investment portfolio, how it should be invested, how to align that with your goals and your risk. And so we kind of build an entire plan of all of that. And, and one section is all about optimizing your current situation. And then another is all about the future. Hmm. So we want to dive into your goals, make sure we understand what they are, make sure you understand what you need to do to accomplish them and how to get on track. 
and help you build out a plan to be on track and kind of bring up your kind of financial confidence meter uh, so that you're on track for what you care about. So and we go ahead. Yeah, sorry. go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, and we leave everyone with like very actionable, specific things. So we're not going to say, oh, you need an emergency fund. We're going to say because of your lifestyle, you need an emergency fund of X months of expenses. That number is this, and that we recommend you open it at this account. Not because they're paying us, we don't make the, you know commissions from the referrals, but because we've evaluated a lot of financial institutions and we think that they have the best interest rate and the best experience. And that money that you should put in there should come from this account or a combination of these two accounts. And we're gonna leave you with very specific advice, not just on where to put your money, but you know if you wanted to go into your Vanguard account, here's what you should sell and here's exactly what you should buy. Uh, and we found that by doing that, you know, we have the overwhelming majority of our clients all taking multiple actions in the first month working with us because we've made it easy. We've taken the time to understand them. After we deliver this plan, you know, you hop on the phone with an advisor and you get to ask questions and we kind of make sure that you really understand everything. Uh, I think that's the core of the early part of the product. And then on an ongoing basis, you know, we stay in touch with you, help make, keep you accountable help proactively reach out if things change in the market or with your situation to help you figure out how to keep staying on track as life takes its kind of inevitable twists and turns. That's perfect. When I, when you and I were talking on top of each other, you actually answered the question I was going to ask about, is it just investment advice? But it sounds like it's much more, it's much broader. We're talking about you know savings plans, you know paying off debt, things like that, uh, estate plans, things like that. Is that right? Yeah, when we we talk to people about investment products and you know the question most people have and are top of mind and concerned about isn't I've got a certain amount of money to invest for 30 years which you know index funds do I pick it's I'm able to save this much and I could put it in an investment account I could put it to save for my kids education I could put it to pay off my student loans I could put it to go on a vacation and I don't know which one of those things is appropriate and whether doing one of them is going to totally ruin my chance of doing something else I care about and what should I do? And investments are a piece of every kind of financial plan, but so is understanding your goals and, and allocating your resources in the right way and kind of really changing some key behaviors. And so we take, think that you need to take a look at everything before you can take a look at one thing. And so, so we don't prioritize investments over anything else because we want to make sure we get the full comprehensive picture first. That's great. So where does the, the robo per, uh, a part of it come in? Where does the robo advisor part of it come in? Yeah, so two places. So one, what software lets us do is if you work with a traditional financial planner, you know, you might hear, oh, if you could print out your brokerage statements and bring them to our office, you know, we'll we'll go through them. And so the, the robotic software element of what we do makes it easier for all the information you have about your life and your finances to get passed on into kind of all the secure software we've built. And we use that and we encrypt all the, you know, all, all of our things so that we can basically have access to that information when we're doing the planning. And then when advisors are doing planning, you know, a traditional financial planning software might spit out a hundred page PDF. Uh, that's really confusing. So they might have to spend three hours walking you through it. We've designed our financial plan on our own from the ground up. And so we're able to take all of that information because we've built the software ourselves and display it in a way that actually feels more human and might make sense to you and that you could read on your own. Uh, so the software lets us both make advisors jobs easier and make the experience better for a client. You don't need to come to the office at, you know, nine to five, Monday to Friday. You could fill out your profile online whenever you want because it's online. Uh, the robo advisor part I didn't mention, which is we do have another product uh, that we offer clients completely optionally called Grove Invest. Some of our clients love after they've gotten kind of a plan and gotten on track to say, you know, what, I'll just manage my investment portfolio. And that's fine. We'll tell them what to do. And some people are a little bit overwhelmed by making trades themselves and rebalancing regularly. So we do have kind of our version of a robo advisor, which is a managed investment portfolio. We do charge a competitive rate to a lot of other services of 0.25%. Um, but we actually waive the, the fees on the first $100,000 of your investment portfolio for all of our members. That's great. That's great. Okay. So it sounds like you are competing in this market of the $2,500 per year or the $5,000 per year financial advisor. And we talk about this being an affordable way to manage your money and, and really grow your wealth. Help us understand the cost structure. What does something like this cost me? Yeah, so right now, uh, if you sign up today, the price is $600 a year. Um, that's because we're, we're offering an early customer discount to get there right now. And uh, 
you know, that, that gets paid just up front once per year. There's no kind of, depending on how much money you have, you have to pay more. We kind of wanted to, to charge a fixed rate for everyone because, you know, we're doing the same amount of work, um, you know, looking into everything and, and it's not about your investments entirely. So that's how we charge today. Um, there, that's, that's the only fee to become a member. There's no, there's no catch or, you know, hidden other fees beyond that. Okay. How, how is a company like yours able to do it for a quarter of the price that you would normally pay? What, what are you guys eliminating? How, how does this work? How, how, how do you guys, how are you guys able to do that? Yeah. If you look at kind of statistics about traditional financial advisors, they spend about 80% of their time doing things that aren't working with clients and 20% of their clients time directly working with clients. So because we've built software that allows both the client and our software to do a lot of that back in the back office work, processing data, interpreting financial statements, um, all of that kind of stuff, we just save the time of the advisor from doing things that you would otherwise be paying them to do. Hmm. Uh, because we've kind of built a, a, what I'll call, you know, really beautiful interface to thinking about your finances, we actually find that our clients understand things better and if I can help you understand your finances more easily, then I don't need to spend three or four hours walking you through a hundred charts, you know, printed out in a binder. Um, you know, I tried to do the math once on the average cost an advisor spends on paper, toner, and printing just for uh, a client per year because it seemed like, you know, for for one of the financial advisors at our office at their previous job, they were printing out hundreds and hundreds of pages per year uh, per client. And my rough calculation that it was in the like, you know, close to a hundred, if not more dollars per year, just on printing and paper. And so there's, there's all kinds of different ways that we're able to, to make the efficient efficiencies, um, driven to, we, there's all different kinds of ways we use those efficiencies to drive the cost down. I love it, man. So how, how many people are working at the company now? Yeah. So right now we have a team of 13 people. Um, we'll probably be 20 in the next, uh, few weeks or months. Um, and yeah, we're, we're working hard. That's great. You guys are based in San Francisco. We're based in San Francisco. Yeah. So the, the, the growth from 13 to 20, I'm assuming the adoption level has been, been going pretty well for you. Yeah. So right now, um, you know, you could argue it's going too well. Uh, right now we actually have a wait list, uh, to be totally transparent. Um, if you sign up today, which, you know, we start people off with a webinar, which is why I have this great uh, setup right here. Um, the There is a wait list right now, and we've got people who are really excited to use the product. Um, actually pay uh, $50, gets you to hold your place in line. It's a refundable deposit. Uh, and so that helps us kind of understand the demand so we can build, build and scale up the team faster. And so, you know, we're prioritizing scale based on demand. And right now there there's a lot of it because there's just not a lot of options. That's great, man. Well, cool. You found a great market there. So where do you see the company going in five years? If you look back and you say, hey, I've done a really great thing, where, what would you be happy seeing in five years from now if you, uh, with Grove? Yeah. So, I mean, right now we're just only able to tackle a small part of the market because of our size. So for one, I'd love to be able to help more people, right? Right now there are people that don't know about us, um, haven't found out, haven't hit the complexities of life that financial planning is important. Uh, I want to be able to build a company where all of those people can get advice and advice they can trust um, that's, that kind of covers their entire financial picture. Uh, right now, there's a probably 20 different sub-industries of you know, financial advice and planning. And uh, I think many of those industries have some room to grow and innovate. Uh, things like estate planning, things like life insurance, things like banking and checking accounts and all of them, there's there's plenty of room to adopt a more customer centric mentality and, and user you know design centric products. And so I'd like to think that as we grow, we're able to offer more products and services to people that are continue to operate in their best interest, align nicely with their financial plan uh, and just save people time and money on what they need to, to do to live the most fulfilling lives they can. Uh, and so we'll be working on that over the next, you know, five years. But in the short term, it's really just trying to grow and scale the the product and the team so we can help all the people that are waiting to get on board. Well, that's great, man. I love conversations like this. You guys have taken a, a major, major problem in our country and you're attacking it head on. So congratulations uh, for, for doing what you're doing, man. Hey, while, while I've got you, you said you're, you're, an, uh, you're an artist with optimization and you're a super personal finance guy. Like what is your favorite 
optimization financial hack that you could share with us today? Man, I'm uh, I'm about to release a video series of my own about about different financial you know tips or hacks, and I've got tons of them, and I don't even know where to start. Um, you know, on the spot. Um, I think my biggest hack is is just helping people think through the process of of where they live and and buying homes. And it seems to be the American dream to buy a home. And I think my hack is really the opposite of a hack, which is the biggest hack is not getting caught up in things you think you should do and acting in ways that maybe aren't in the most economic interest. And so buying a home may seem like a great idea on paper because you know, you're putting money into an asset, but at the same time, if you look at all the costs that come with it, the real estate agent fees when you sell, the HOA fees, the insurance, the property tax, the mortgage interest, um, the maintenance, the repairs, and you kind of sum all that up, sometimes, you know, if your mortgage were $2,000, uh, or sorry, if your rent was $1,000, you might be spending $2,000 a year uh, to own a home, or sorry, per month, and if you're spending an extra $1,000 a month buying a home, uh, and you instead invested that money, you could actually be putting that money to work and, and having the same amount of investment in assets that you know, will benefit you in the future. And so you know, I just kind of try to really think deep on every big decision about whether it actually makes sense and try to remove the emotions from it. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if that's a good hack. It is. Well, you know what? I think that um, home, home ownership can be a blessing, but it can definitely be a curse if you've done it the wrong way and you're forcing something and, and don't, like you said, what you're supposed to do, right? Man, if especially in Northern California, <laughs> you, you you don't have to buy a home in Northern California. You could you could easily drown yourself, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it is it's a bit crazy out here. And sometimes I think people real don't realize that, you know, oh, we're going to start a family in 3 or 4 years, so we should buy a house to that can hold them. Um, well, if you were renting for the three years until you have that family, you wouldn't need the, the extra two bedrooms. So the money, you, you you know, you might compare the cost of a three bedroom rental to a three bedroom house and forget the fact that because you lock yourself into the house, you've got to buy those three bedrooms now. But if you're renting, you could wait two years before you get them. And that's a lot of savings. And I think when you get caught up in what you think you're supposed to do, you might forget what's actually best for you. And if you really plan, you know, look down for the rest of your life and what you really care about, the money you might save might be the difference between paying for half of those children's college and, and it might actually not actually be worth it. Uh, so I guess the real hack is like, just figure out what your goals are so you can prioritize what you do. Well, it sounds like Grove might be able to help us do that. So t- tell us about this, uh, this free financial checkup that I, that I saw on the website. What's that all about? Yeah. So we just wanted to give people a way to kind of answer a few questions and get a few basic pieces of advice to kind of think about not only what they should be doing without needing to sign up for a financial advisor, but maybe understand ways that their situation lines up with the product we offer. Uh, So we'll ask some basic questions about, you know, your spending or your budget or how much you have saved or what, you know, what kinds of things you've done in your life and, you know, come back and say, here's what our general guidance is. If you don't have an emergency fund, here's kind of about how much we think is on average a good amount to have. And we'll also let you know how some of these areas we might be able to help and some of them we might not, you know, um, just to kind of help you get an understanding of some basic things you might be doing wrong or could improve and, you know, ways a professional might help. And, you know, there's no obligation to take it and sign up and, you know, become a client of ours. You could take it, just see what it says and see if it's helpful and go from there. Yeah, everybody, I just did this um, literally maybe three hours ago. There's no email required or anything like that. You go through it. You can learn about um, how Grove kind of di- diagnoses your your financial situation and kind of get a flavor for, for how they work together. So, so um, Chris, where can people find this free checkup, and then where can people learn more about Grove? Yeah, so our website is hellogrove.com. Um, uh, we're, we're trying to be Hello Grove on all, all of the social medias, but, uh, you know, we're working on Facebook right now. Uh, no one's using it, but one day we'll have it. Um, so you can find us there. You can find me, uh, you know, at Hutchins on Twitter. Um, and, you know, you should be able to sign up for either take the financial checkup on our website or sign up for a webinar and, you know, see this studio again with one of our financial planners who will kind of walk through a little bit more about what we do, give you a chance to ask questions, uh, and just share a little bit more about the product. We'll actually walk through a, a demo of the product uh, and get a chance to see it and understand what, what you'd be getting if you were working with us. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for taking time with us, Chris, and congratulations for 
building a company that's really solving a major issue in our country. I appreciate it, man. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for giving me the opportunity to help talk about this with people. It's really important.